Hi everyone, this is Radul live. Thanks for tuning in as <coughs> usual. I hope you're enjoying your weekend. Now, usually, as you know, me, I speak about football, but from the position of an outsider looking in. Today, I want to talk to an insider looking out so that we get the true facts of what footballers in this country go through. So joining me today is Zach Matesi. Zach, how are you doing? I'm good. By, by the way, your body language is already <laughs> someone who's stressed. <laughs> And we haven't even started talking about your football life. But, Zach, how did you get into football? Let, give us some background first before we get to the issues that we have. Okay. Um, I started football way back uh, in my primary days. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was so against it, though he was a footballer also. So, uh, That's probably why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was taking so much of my school time. And I was a project as a, as a project of Mesa, mm -hmm. my mother youth sports association. Um, so in two oh five, uh, we we went for a trip to Norway. Mm -hmm. um, that's where my journey started actually. So after coming back from Norway, I had to repeat class because it it had taken like two months. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, after primary, I went to St. Anthony's Boys High School in Kitale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my dad was like, so you, because you love football, you have to go to Kitale. So I was like, okay, fine. When did you to forget football? You was taking you far away from No, football. like, it figured a point he had to accept. Like, he oh, accepted okay. that, okay, I can play now. So, so that school was good in football? Yeah, it is Strong. a power. It's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a St. Anthony's Boys in Kitale. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after... I went from one, I didn't get a chance to play, so I used to play for those Coca-Cola stuff and everything mm -hmm. because the school had big wigs and stuff. So um, at form three, I was like, hey, dad, me, I can't, I can't go back there. I was like, life was hell there. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so That's I... No soft life. <laughs> yeah, I, I was used to soft life. Like, okay, not soft, soft, though, but... So I, tell, I told my dad, dad, me, I can't go back there. So he was like, okay, me, I'm not taking you to another school. At that time, I was, I can say that was my peak now. Mm -hmm. So while I was training at home, there's a, one day a, a coach came, a guy, a random guy came to the field and he was like, oh, I like how you're playing, Nini. I want to give you a scholarship. Mm -hmm. So I was like, which school? Then he told me Laser Hill. Then I was like, okay, I know my dad will refuse, but okay, you can meet my mom then. So I took him to my mom, we talked, mom accepted. So when dad came... And it's a scholarship. Yeah, and it's mm. a scholar, full scholarship, 100%. Ah. Yeah. So dad was like, no, my, can't, hey, my son can't, can't, can't study on scholarship. So we had that confrontation for a while. So during that period, I used to, like, I went to Laser Hill. I signed those papers and stuff. So we were like, okay, dad, me, I'm going. I was like, if you go to that school, then forget about me. You I get so me and mom went. Then, like, in the process, dad came. Then he was like, okay, fine. Let me take you to school. We went. And that's how my journey in Laser Hill started. And that's why I can say Laser Hill built me to, to who I am, like, to playing in the Premier League. Then I, I played, I, I, my scholarship was up to Form 6. I went up to Form 6. I did IGCSE. Mm -hmm. So uh, after high school, I joined Strathmore. Mm -hmm. on, on scholarship again. Uh, yeah, you were that good. That's <laughs> what people understand. <laughs> yeah, I joined Strathmore. I played for uh, two years. Manze, CPA was hard. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> then after Strathmore, I got on, uh, I was to go for trials mm -hmm. uh, in the US. Mm -hmm. There were these KUSA games. Then there are some scouts who came from US. They told me like, okay, I've, we have chosen you. We are two, me and some guy in uh, Nairobi Uni. Mm -hmm. They said I was meant to report in US 9th of January. That was 2013, 2014, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I usually don't want to talk about this because I was asked for some money for with some coach who, who I won't like. I won't reveal the name who was part of the project. So he was like, you have to give me like 100 Gs that time. 
So for you to travel. 2013 is like half a million now. Yeah. <laughs> for you to travel. Then my coach, Mikiwecha, was like, no, you don't have to pay for, for your talent. Mm. I'll, I'll try to talk to him and everything. And you know, this, this, uh, why it's, they gave me even the, the school program and everything. They said they'll cater for everything. Like, I, I only have to look for the visa, I guess. Mm. So me, I went back home. I told my dad, uh, I've got an opportunity. He was like, okay, what do you do? I was told I give a hundred thousand. And you know, you remember my dad, how he was? I was like, okay, no, me, I won't pay a hundred thousand for you too. So I talked to Eche. Things went, I uh, so um, I can say I didn't go because of, I didn't raise that money. But what was a hundred thousand for? Because you're not supposed to pay. Which is right. Yeah, it was, <laughs> so you know, <laughs> So afterwards, I was told that was the trend. Like so many people who have gone, mm. they usually do that. Mm. Yeah. So me and Johnny Kwanu Mezo Yanjia straight. Yeah. So it happened that way. Um, I, I I joined Moyers Ministry of Youth. I played for one year. Then that's when I joined Thika after mm. Moyers. Thika, I, I signed a contract for three years. Okay. During my start my years, that's when I got my my injury. I stayed one year without playing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, my first injury, I was uh, I, I, I underwent a surgery. Where in my my your knee? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, tendon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I stayed out for one year. Then after one year, that's when I joined Moyers. Mm -hmm. Moyers, I played for one year. Then we went for a friendly. Then I was signed by Thika. After that friendly. I signed a contract for three years. During my, my, my thicker years, that's when my injury used to, like, I play for 10 games after, even not 10, like seven or eight, mm -hmm. my knee starts again. So I have to go to rehab again. Um, I come back, I play for five games, I go ten, again, again for rehab, mm -hmm. yeah, so. And, and, and what level of treatment were you getting? I can say it wasn't the best because uh, I, I, I used to have a, a physio in Kenyatta. Mm. And he used to tell me the, the biggest mistake I did was after my first surgery, I didn't, go, I didn't uh, undergo proper rehabilitation. Proper rehab. Yeah, Because I remember I used to run and my legs swells. You go, no. Even today it's like that. When it's cold, it swells. And there was no one at, at Strathmore at that time who could advise you or... Okay, I can say my, our physio at Strathmore mm. wasn't the best. He was, he was good, yes, mm. but he wasn't so much on my case and because there were so many people with the injuries and stuff. So, so we'll, we'll come back to the injuries. So yeah. you, you play for Thika for some time and then you move to Western Steamer? Yeah, mm -hmm. I played for one year there. Eh, Kisumu. <laughs> you know, you're saying more with those airs than you're actually saying. <laughs> yeah, what was the experience like playing for a, a Kenyan Premier League side? Because it's what footballers in Kenya aspire to, at least first let me play for Premier League before I go for abroad. But yeah. what was it really like? I can say playing in the Premier League, during my days, it was the best, like, it was the best feeling ever. Mm. Because me, usually, I played for Thika when Supersport was still there. So I used mm. to, we used to enjoy those. Plus oh, Super Sport used to give allowances. Yeah, I think there yeah. was uh, Tasca were uh, yeah. title sponsors. Yeah, true. So there was a bit of money in the game. Yeah, yeah. And mm. I can say Thika was at that time it was the best because like you, you used to have the best allowance allowances. You used to sleep in big hotels. Because Thika at that time, if I'm not wrong, was under Brookside. Brookside, yeah. Mm. yeah. So I can say me playing in the Premier League, I it was the best feeling because we explored a lot. I knew so many things that I didn't know about football. Mm. Yeah. And then Stima? Um, my stint at Stima wasn't long because uh, I was sent there by someone. I went. It wasn't that good because I still I was fighting my injury. Mm. Yeah. So I played there for one, one year. Then I came to police. I sent for police. Mm -hmm. Kenya police, yeah. Kenya police or signing non-police? Yeah. 
or you go for training like you go you you sign then after some one year or two years then you you're taken to for training so, so how long were you at police and police is now second tier yeah nationwide that at that time at that time yeah when i was signing for police it was second tier yeah. um i appealed for police for one year and then covid came ah. <laughs> and you were unlucky yeah i was very unlucky and you know what my time at police i was i was still rehabilitating Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I came from Stima with my injuries. Yeah. So at what point did you decide I cannot continue with football? Now, okay. During the COVID period, so you remember they uh, they said there were no gyms, no training. Everywhere was closed. So I used to train at home. Uh, yeah. There's nothing as hard as training at home. You train Kidogo, you feel hungry, you go eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I became big. <laughs> <laughs> Because like there's no going to the gym, there's no going to the pitch. There's you no training with your team. Yeah, and mm. there's no if there's one thing, if there's one hard thing about training, is training alone. Man. Attacking Ronaldo misses you wanna train as Training <laughs> alone is hard. <laughs> hey, you can't even you can't focus. That's the point. You can't focus. Yeah. Yeah. And then at that point, nobody even knew when the leagues were coming back. Yeah. You're you're a bit in limbo. Yeah, when you look at the t- yeah the um, television, you're like, okay, curfew extended for G30 days, G60 days. And then I lost hope, Kabisa. And you decided it's a wrap. Yeah, I did. Okay, the the reason why I decided it's a wrap it's because mm. okay, I've not actually decided it's a wrap, but I'm contemplating because football in Kenya is dying, and it's mm. very sad. Like, there's nothing motivating me to go back. You get, mm. like. At the moment, there's no sponsorship, you get, so... We are banned. Yeah, we are banned. The management. Um, Kina Ringera took over the, the federation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, actually, there's, there's no motivation for me to go back. I, I don't see anything that will make me go back at the moment. Does it... Because when I... When I uh, this, uh, when when we talk mostly on ins- instagram yeah. on in story you're very emotional about your story and about it's like you feel there's a, a lost a big lost opportunity yeah, true. like like you were wasted yeah. for lack of a better yeah that's how you feel yeah, that's how you feel i feel like i was wasted like i feel like at some point i felt my dad was right you get because you see this all these years i could have been somewhere maybe in europe or anywhere but hey, well, football in Kenya is. Uh, what 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 did your dad go through? Why is he so? Uh, there's something. Like Have he ever told so you his story? Okay, my dad is not around. My dad passed on. All left. All okay, left. Uh, so. Uh, but what was his story for him to be so against it? He was like, "There's no football in Kenya." That's what he used to mm. say. Yeah, he used to. Okay. Who did he play for? He played. He played for um, high school. He played from Fred, uh, Kakamega High School. One um, of the best in the country. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I usually I I I someday saw a picture of him mm. in FC in FC Leopards. Yeah, so that's what his, that was his dream for me. He he used to tell me if you play for Premier League, I want you to play for FC. You see, and usually my games with FC, my my time in Premier League when he was playing for Premier League. In Premier League, yeah, he used to come mm. for my games, mostly the FC ones. And he was like, "You see, FC is better than you guys." <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. But you never got an opportunity at FC. No, I didn't. I didn't get an opportunity at FC. Yeah. Yeah. What What do you wish happened? If 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 What What did young Zach want to want his football career to be like? Okay. Um. My greatest uh, wish was I could have played in Europe somewhere. Like, I believe I was so talented. I'm, I'm so talented, I can say that. And I don't think Kenya was my place. Maybe that's why I suffered a lot in Kenya. Your <laughs> yeah. mind was not here. Yeah, my mind was not here. I guess the expectations and everything, that's, why, that's what made me lost, lose hope so very, very fast, yeah. Let's go back to your injury oh. because 
it's a big issue in Kenya and among Kenyan footballers that um, there is a gap or the Premier League and the clubs don't have a plan for injured players. I don't know how many times I've been in fundraisers, a player is, an active player is injured and the club just moves on. Um. And as you say, what happens after your first injury can determine whether that becomes a permanent yeah. injury or not. Yeah, true. Uh, I can say about injuries, um, I can say we don't have the best facilities. Um, uh, the, you're not playing for the best teams. Um, I, mean, I don't know. But the teams that I've played for, um, uh, how, we, how Kenyans uh, attend to injuries, it's very different from Europe. You see, like, uh, at Thika, I, went, I, under, I, I underwent another knee surgery. Mm -hmm. The same leg. But then, how they follow up is the problem. Like, when you get an injury, you're, you are on your own. You get, like, you just want your feet. You don't want you with an injury. Go sort your issue and come yeah, back to Yeah, then play. come back. It, it's very sad. And that's why you see even big players in big teams like Gore and you still go for fundraisers because they, they, they only want your feet. You get. And yet, you, you are on a contract. You get. And... There is NHF and everything, so it's it's very sad. Do the contracts you sign, mm. what do they say under the medical part? You're under an insurance. So when you get an injury, mm. you're meant to be treated by it, you get. But, okay. The, the, the clubs have insurance? Yeah. Maybe Thika. We used did to. Did Western Steamer have insurance? Yeah, they did, they did, mm. yeah. I can say most of the clubs have, um, uh, most of the clubs had. had. Now, yeah. I think it's only Madhari United that always usually pushes for a, 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 an insurance partner. Yeah. But I can say... Uh, and then maybe the corporate clubs. There's a time... The time I, I went for my second surgery, mm. my insurance was running like a NHF and they look at you, they were like, hey, it has a debt for six months. You not like, paid for six months. Yeah, and you know, mm. in our salaries, they used to cut. Aye. Yeah, NHF. It was like 500 or 800, I think, mm. per month. So they were like, hey, it has a debt of six months, how many months? Yeah. And then they don't let you back debt. You have to pay. Hey. That's why, okay. I can say in Kenya there is no there's no follow up. When you get an injury. So uh Radul, I can tell you when I got my second surgery, mm -hmm. there's a friend of mine at Maisa. You know us the we are we are project of Maisa. Mm. And Maisa is a it's a full um, it has rehab, it has gym and everything. So there's more as a physio there, my friend. He told me, Zach, you know what? I know what you're going through, Nini. So me, I'll take you during this journey. Mm -hmm. And he was there for me. But there, I, I usually thank him so much for that. He's the reason why I'm walking even today. Because he did that for me. He told me, Zach, you know what? I know. And that time, Thika, we were struggling. Um, it was my last year in, in Thika, and we were struggling a lot. So it was like, more. These people have left me. They don't want to know anything about me. So let me come. I used to go to Maisa every day with Mas. So I used to go for the rehab and everything. He helped me a lot. Uh, I want us to take a short break there. Yeah. Um, what I want to discuss in the second half yeah. is what solution do you think there is for this football mess we find ourselves in? And of course, your personal hopes and aspirations, whether you think you can come back to the game. <laughs> Let's uh, have that discussion after the break, guys. See you in a bit. Okay.
Welcome back, guys. This is Radul Live. Today I'm speaking to Zach Matesi. Yes, uh, I don't know that to say former footballer <laughs> or a footballer who's going back, but a footballer who's been dealing with an injury which uh, was not treated properly the first time and uh, has become a problem ever since. Um, Zach, yeah, we were talking about your injury in the first half. Mm. Do you think your uh, knee injury will ever be... Do you think you'll be able to play football again? How old are you now? <laughs> I've got so many women who hesitate. <laughs> I'm 25 now. 25 is young. Yeah. 25 is still young. Especially if you're really 25, not yeah. Africa 25. <laughs> Your twin is 36. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 25. 25, you're still young. Yeah. 25, you're still young. Do you think you can come back to football? I mean, okay. this. I'm sure you can get back to fitness, so uh, let me not judge. No. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. I don't mind getting back, but mm. at least I need something to motivate me, like something to show me that like, when I go back, I won't suffer the same way I suffered back then. And everything. So Physically, can it happen? I mean, yeah, yeah. Your, your at the moment, I'm training. Be, yeah. At the moment, you're back in training. Yeah, yeah. But you don't, have, you don't have a club yet, or yeah, yeah. I'm training on my own. I play the entire matches and everything. So, what, 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 what's the one thing that frustrates you so much about Kenyan football? There's no one thing. I have like a million things that frustrate okay, me. Okay, some. Okay, tell me some. That one, is so one, I'll say the management, the Kenya football management is, I think it's a joke. Because we thought, okay, me, I had so much hope. I had so much hope in, with Kenyan football. And how the structures were, were like, the, the current, um, the current federation, I can say they, when they came, they tried, like they, they put on structures that I knew it will help Kenyan football. But at the moment, I wouldn't even want my kid or someone's kid to play in Kenya. You'll be like your dad. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's, um, what do you think are some of the solutions? What can we do? Carol, eh, at the moment, I don't think there's someone who will help Kenyan football. I don't think. It's just dead. It's dead. To me, it's dead, actually. I won't lie, it's dead. Like, you get... The, the minute the government, the Kenyan government went into that, I knew we are not going anywhere. Because... Okay, Carol, I'll ask you a question. Mm. How, many, how many agents are there? Football agents are there in Kenya? Uh, legal or the Juakali ones? No, legal. Wow, less than five. Yeah. There are oh, very few. To me, I, I know Tombwana and Ato, uh, sport, Ato Sports only, you see. Jamal. Yeah, Jamal. And he's, um, mm. you see. So I can say it shows you are very far, Carol. Like every footballer's dream is to play outside. Mm. You get. And at the moment, I can say the only place Kenya we can go, as in the only footballer's uh, destination that we know right now is Sweden. You get because of our total. Because of our total, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's to me, I don't think eh, we need to do a but, lot. But you can start with Sweden, do <laughs> a, do an Olunga, you know. Yeah. You start and then you go to the far east. You focus, you focus and make your money. You know, for all this criticizing Olunga, go to Europe. Yeah. Say, hey, I'm making my money in Qatar, you know. Yeah, true. So me, I don't think we need to do a lot, Carol. I might stand for an FKF president. Maybe, you maybe you'll change. To tell me. <laughs> maybe you'll change. You'll we'll change football in Kenya, maybe. Uh, no, I have my place and it's not there. <laughs> but you, 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 you seem so disillusioned and depressed. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's so reflective of what our football is. How, do you, how are you feeling? I want to see you emotional. Carol, I can tell you, all this you see, it's because of what I, went, I, 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 I underwent, like, it wasn't an easy uh, path because I can say, okay, I enjoyed football when I joined Thika. That's when I enjoyed, I enjoyed football. Like, I enjoyed my money, I enjoyed everything. But before and after, it was hell, I can say that. Because but, but it's unfortunate because you, you're actually one of the lucky ones. I mean, you, at least you got scholarships, you... Okay, that's, that's, a, that's a positive, that yeah. You. That's a plus. Okay, um, me getting a scholarship, a full scholarship, it was, it was the best thing that happened to me. Mm. Um, 
But then I can say uh, after, like life after school was, hey, Carol, you used to, like when I was playing for Mars, mm. okay, let me tell you a short story of me. We used to play, we used to train at prisons. You see Amref. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Langata Road. Yeah, Langata Road. And you, you are not on allowances or anything. So you come for training with your own money. You go home with your own money. So if you don't have money, like, ama will, anywhere you get source of income. You used to walk, Carol, from Langata Road to City Stadium. Okay. <laughs> then your workout after the workout. Yeah. And so, before. And we are like 35 players. We are fighting to be in the first 18. The first 18, uh, you are paid 4,500 per game. You get, and that four thousand five hundred, it's what you, you have, you don't have a salary. That's the allowance, the match allowance. That's assuming you play. Yeah, so you're meant to be una for forty five hundred. You get. And maxim maximum on a good month is four games. Yeah, so I can say, hey. so it was, it was, it was, it was a dream come true for me when I signed for Thika. I knew, okay, this is now my my. A time to shine, you get. But then, after three years, okay, after two years, things went, didn't go well. Uh, we lost sponsorship. You yeah, remember? at some point, uh, Brookside pulled out. I yeah, remember. And then when, we, when they pulled out, that's when things went bad for us. So I had to. When you see, because you say you can still come back to the game, but when you see what's happening, like what happened with Mazari United. Um, having to be relegated from lack of funds. There's so many clubs, players have not been paid for three, six months. It's very sad, actually. And right now, the best clubs to play for are corporates, like Tasca, Bandari. Those are the best clubs to play. But you can't all play for that, for those clubs. So it's, it's hard. Like, I have friends. Carol, if I can show you my contacts, um, I'm a, my messages, my friends, my friends are struggling. Like, these are the reasons why I'm bitter, because someone is playing, and you know, Carol, they, if there's, there's a country that people, people are waiting to talk, it's Kenya. Like, you see, when you play in the Premier League, mm. then they okay, the newspapers are on you, you're on television, then you go back home, you tell someone, I don't have money, I'm a, mm. someone tells you, okay, help me, 5,000, I'll pay back at the end of the month, you're like, okay, I don't have money. You don't have money and you see on TV, you see on the papers. So you're, you're glamorized and yeah. yet there's nothing to show for it. Yeah, that's the point. So you go home, there's not even Mgati, nothing. Mm -hmm. You've come with nothing. Yeah, that's what, that's, that's why I'm bitter, Carol, because I have so many friends, so many. Like, they're like, hey, Zach, as you're playing and you're, they, you're, not, you're getting nothing, you get. I, I, some of them are in my inbox, ah. and where I can, I try and help, but you can't all the time yeah. because even you, you're just hustling, you know. Yeah, true. So, what are you doing at the moment, though? Um, at the moment, I'm doing business. Um, okay. S hustling. Yeah, I'm hustling. Okay, that's well, what I'm saying. I'm <laughs> yeah, so we hustle everywhere. Like anything we get, we do. So that's how you you're, you're coping. What would be your ideal situation? What would be in, f in terms of Kenyan sports, what would you like to see happen to Kenyan football? A huge transformation. I can say, I'd, I'd, if, okay, I've had um, friends from Ghana, um, Nigeria, those sides, mm. Central Africa countries. I hear they are, they are, you see like Barcelona, Bayern, they have their base there. Mm. I'll, I'll want Kenya to be something like that. So that, okay, let's not see football around here alone. Like... In the towns. Yeah, in the towns and everywhere, you get. And we, we stop that trend of... Actually, those old old players like us, okay. So, okay. Those who have been in the 25. Premier League. <laughs> are, okay, I'm 25 years, but my experience in the Premier League and uh, in football is way much ahead of so many guys you get. Mm. You see what Sharks are, uh, Kenya Sharks are, Kar Sharks are doing, it's, it's a good thing, yes. 
they're, st they're, they're ending the trend of old players are meant to play. You get, you go to some team. Carol, I went, me, I went for trials for, for, for a couple of teams. You go for, to a trial, you're told, okay, you train. You train till the last day, and then they tell you, okay, bad luck, try next time. Someone comes on the last day, you get. That's what killing, it's killing Kenyan football. Ka someone comes on the last day and he signs. So the duration that you're training for two weeks, three weeks, they're aiming at someone else. They're talking to someone else. Negotiations are happening. While wasting your time. Yeah, they're wasting your time. Then they release you on the last day and the window is closing tomorrow. You get. So there's no time to go for, to another club. Yeah. Okay. For me, I experienced that a lot. The time I trained at KCB, I trained at so many teams. Even that FC, I trained for them. Till the last day. Then they tell you, okay, you can't. You get. And you had so much hopes, they have given you jerseys, you know, okay, me, I'm signing, you get. And then the, on the last day they're telling you, okay, we can't sign you, you try next time. You'll be the first person we'll call. <laughs> so. You've seen things. Nice. What's been your lowest moment for you? In football, am I? In football. Okay. Or, or several. It seems maybe you have more than one. Um, my lowest moments were... Okay, look, let me say, in high school, we lost at the finals of East Africa. That was my lowest moment at that time. During the Premier League, I'm a, my injuries. I can say, me, I got an injury. I didn't tell you this. I got an injury. And that game, Stanley Okumbi coach mm. had come to watch me. I was to, to be called up for Rambe. Uh, I can remember it was, you were playing against Sony Sugar. Mm. Uh, then I got an injury. And he had come like the previous game. He told my coach, Coach Nando at that time, me I want to call up this uh, Zach. I was a fullback, fullback three. And then that game, I got an injury. But the day, like, that game I knew after playing this game I'll be called up. Yeah, then I got an injury. That was my lowest moment in football. My lowest, lowest kabisa. I cried that day. And they, yeah. Who are some of the coaches you've worked with? You've mentioned Nandwa, which I think was a fantastic coach. No, I've um, Mikiweche, Charles Correa, Police, uh, Na Coach Nandwa. Coach Muyoti, Coach Kingi, uh, uh, Coach... Big names in Kenyan football. Uh, the late coach, um, Western Steamer. Oh, uh, Nani. Who passed away? Was it last year or the year before? Uh, last year, but one. Yeah. Uh, but we worked with him a short period. If you come back to the game, where would you like to play? Or you have to finish your father's legacy and play for <laughs> AFC Leopards. Okay. If it happens. Yeah, I wouldn't mind playing for AFC Leopards, yes. I wouldn't. Yeah. No. What, or uh, Kakamega Homeboys, you know. I want to play for one of the other clubs. Yeah. <laughs> Toto is my friend. He's my friend. Toto is your friend. Yeah. Also, Toto give you a contract. Yeah, but okay. Because of money. <laughs> there's, a funny, there's a funny story about me and Toto. There's a time Toto wanted me so much. Mm. I had to block him on my phone. Why? Because I was so much, I, I was on demand. Um, that time Sharks wanted me, poster. So my, my friend who was like my agent told me, okay, well, let's go for, for a club in Nairobi. I regretted that, man, I regretted that move. Anyway, yeah, that's how me and Toto became friends. So when he sees me, he's like, oh, you, you remember he used to, he used to call me every time, man, in the morning. He even came, like, like he was tracking me. There's a time, okay, I come from Kitale. Like, Kitale is my home also. So he was like, I know you're in Kitale. Come to Kakamega right now. We, we strike the deal. And I was like, okay, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow in the morning he calls. Yeah, so that's how my friendship, me and him came. Yeah. It's not too late. Get back <laughs> to training. Yeah. 
My camera man here is a fitness instructor. He'll help you. Okay. <laughs> I'll consider that. You get yeah. back in training. You go to Kakamega home. By the way, someone like Alan Wanga just made that decision. I'm going. I'm moving to Kakamega for for this. And then uh, Kakamega homeboys, and luckily in that area, the county governments are stepping up. Yeah. Between Kakamega and Vihiga, the county governments are really stepping up, yeah. unlike the rest of the country. But uh, Zach, I think we leave it there. Um, unless you feel there's something you've not expressed. No, okay. Uh, <laughs> when we started, I thought you were going to cry. <laughs> ah, would, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't. No, I can't. but it, it's, I can feel the emotion, I can feel the frustration of playing football in this country. And it, it, it frustrates me who doesn't even play. No. Because I know what football can do, yeah. what it's done, what we see it happening in, in, in other leagues in other countries. Yeah. And yet here we're just jokers. Absolutely. It's very jokers. sad. Like, you see, Carol, for me, um, I wouldn't advise my kid in future to play football. Okay. Maybe if things change, though. If you can say, do you wish you listened to your dad? Somehow. I wish. <laughs> It's, I know it's tricky because you were obviously talented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. You were obviously very talented. And the, the last thing you can do is not play and then wish you did. Yeah. So it's great you've had the experience. It's great you're still young. Mm. I don't think all is lost. I wish you would continue to play football. Unfortunately, it's so thankless in this country. <laughs> it's so thankless. Yes. So you really need a strong spirit. But uh, Zach, thanks for talking to us. Yeah, okay. um, thank you. Thank you for hosting me, Pio. Uh, I, I don't know whether that encourages you to play or not play <laughs> football. I think know what you're getting into. That's yeah. a message. If yeah. you want to play football for Kenya, yeah. do it with your eyes open and know what you're getting into. Yeah, and the best advice I can give to the upcoming um, players is you have to have a strong heart for you to play in Kenyan football. You have to, like, it's like you, you're being taken to hell then back to earth, you get. So you have to be that strong, focused and everything. No. Yeah. And those who are managing the sport, get your act together. <laughs> Tafa Dali. Yeah. But thanks for watching uh, Radul Live and uh, listening to Zakia. Very uh, stressed and frustrated. <laughs> but all hope is not lost. Um, yeah, I hope true. we will see you again next week as uh, we have another conversation about Kenyan sport. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>